Another incredible Cooligans episode is about to start. <laughs> okay. Yeah, everybody wait. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome. It's the Cooligans, buddy. As always, excited <laughs> after, uh, you know, after Thanksgiving. Sun-giving. After Sun-giving, of course. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little different than Thanksgiving. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. There's a little bit more pork products. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, your aunt rubs your shoulders. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Asks you when you're going to get married in front of your wife. <laughs> <laughs> but we're excited to be here. Hello. Uh, my name is Christian Polanco. That's right. I'm Alexis Gobe. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, welcome to uh, a brand new episode of The Cooligans. Uh, uh, as always, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Hit subscribe uh, as well on on YouTube. But we're excited uh, today because obviously the MLS playoffs, uh, the the second round just wrapped up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, LAFC played yesterday. Yes, they did. And so we got we we flew him in. I all the way from Los Angeles. We get on the plane <laughs> <laughs> to uh, to talk about uh, LAFC and uh, you know everything going on uh, with uh, you know the just. The, the, you, you know the reigning MLS Cup champions, yes. uh, but no, excited uh, to have in studio the homie of Happy Foot, Sad Foot. That's give it right. up for Travis Helwig. Soundboard, baby. <laughs> Let's go. I do want to say you threw me Comfort Plus and not First, and I do want to talk to someone about that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I also want to talk to someone because it was supposed to be economy. <laughs> okay, we don't have that kind of money. Why are we dropping money? <laughs> so all of a sudden, we just know that we're all yeah. upset. You, somebody <laughs> owes me three <laughs> satchels of biscuits. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, Travis, we've uh, you've done our show before remotely. Yeah. A couple, uh, I think when we were on, uh, on Fubo TV. That's right. What do you prefer, Trav? Travi? Uh, yeah, de definitely Travi. I want you to, <laughs> I want you to lead with Travi the whole time. Now, Travi, what do you, um, you give me, you give me no Travi vibes. Travis, Travis is fine. Although I feel like I'm losing my grasp on the name as ev with every passing day, people are talking about Travis Kelsey. Right. Yes. I mean, we had Travis Scott. I feel like the one thing I do know is that I'm the smartest Travis. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. I cannot think of a smarter Travis, and I'm happy about that. That's, no, that's not bad. Because usually Travis is said following like "Get down from there." <laughs> that's a very Travis. Get down from there. That's like usually. I feel like you can say that to Travis yeah. Scott too. His shows are a little wild. Travis robbed another bank yeah. today. Yeah, damn it, Travis. <laughs> Yeah, you are you are probably the smartest. Well, Travis, Tra Travis Scott obviously uh, dated uh, Kylie. Kylie, mm -hmm. Travis Barker mm -hmm. is uh, married to Courtney Kardashian. I don't know. I feel like Emrata. Yeah, <laughs> Emrata. I saw you courtside you at the, the Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good without those. Yeah, guys. Emrata. Um, I know you're going through a lot, and you like kind yeah. of pudgy blonde guys. Uh, so I'm here, baby. Yeah. Um, uh, my, my wife is watching. Right, I was going to say, so you've been happily married how long? <laughs> no, we're excited to have you here because obviously uh, we can recap MLS uh, Cup playoffs, and it's it's always nice to have someone uh, also in comedy. Uh, and and I I don't have your resume off the top, but I just mm -hmm. want to make sure people know uh, your your contributions to comedy because we initially met um, or, or at least we crossed paths yeah. at UCB. You're a, a writer uh, on on for a mod team, uh, but ever since which then, is sketch, which is yeah, a sketch show. Don't know. But what else? Are you, wait, the listeners don't know about mod team. <laughs> so Michael Delaney, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's go the whole thing. So uh, we'll, we'll, Christian, I'll be back in about forty minutes. <laughs> So Del Close, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll do, uh, this I, is for no one. And then, yeah. our, then our, our producer runs across the <laughs> stage. <laughs> the okay, you better yes and this man. <laughs> that's when we initially uh, crossed paths. But then you started. Uh, 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 maybe then you this was the successful. beginning. <laughs> yeah, okay, so yeah so you wrote on Adam ruins everything. Yes, uh, and then and what else after that? So I yeah, so we we kind of knew each other in New York. I feel like we'd like we're friends of friends or mm -hmm. whatever. I moved out to LA. I've ran on a couple things. I run on Billy on the Street. I wrote on a show called the Ellen DeGeneres Show, which you know one of the most wonderful women on the planet. <laughs> right. Ellen uh, I don't know if you've heard anything different, but the kindest, <laughs> kindest. Yeah. Most, I've signed an NDA as well. Right. Cool. Uh, and a <laughs> super relatable comedy special. <laughs> Uh, Super little. For those of you who have <laughs> multitudes of maids. Uh, 
Um, if you ever want to be yelled at about furniture, you should meet Ellen DeGeneres. Um, the, um, I then was the head writer at Adam Rids Everything. I worked at Crooked Media, the Pod Save America company, for a long time during the Trump years when we were trying to get rid of him, and hopefully we won't have the, to do that the, again. The good years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if oh, I were you, I would, I would wipe off your CV. Because <laughs> I have a feeling this country's about to slide I am like, they're talking about rounding people up. I'm like, how do I get on the other side? Fa- I guess I'm a blonde white guy. I'll yeah. be all right. Yeah, you'll be all right. I'll be last on the list yeah. for who they're coming from. Right, right, right. Um, and and uh, for some reason, after doing all that, I decided to start an LAFC podcast. <laughs> Which is... Let's just give him, bro. I mean, that's it. We all end up in soccer somehow. Okay? If you noticed when he was reading out his his uh, his IMDb or his Indeed, <laughs> it was going up, 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 and then he said podcast, soccer podcast, <laughs> and uh, I was there. Was there, a, there it is. <laughs> uh, so, how did you? Let's talk a little bit about the you know the crooked media and all that. I mean. You obviously were Adam ruins everything. For people who don't know, we both I think saw their packet, right? Did you ever see what their packet looked like? Yes, yes, I did see it. It's like a novel, were, yeah. bro. You needed yeah. so many sources. It was like it was like you had to like prove you knew everything about a subject. I'm like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> Homework. <laughs> Why did you end up in this gig? And did how how did all of those gigs prepare you to talk about Danny Bawanga? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I think of uh, MLS, I think of Adam Conover. Really, no, I uh, big LAFC fan. He is a big LAFC fan. Yeah. I brought him to a game, and um, I actually brought him. This is the, I brought him to when Seattle knocked us out of the playoffs in 2019. His first game, and I was so fucking angry after that game, and he. I didn't understand how big of a deal it was and was trying to cheer me up. And on the drive home, I said, Adam, I need you to stop talking to me right now. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Adam and stop talking are totally not. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> those are things that don't typically coexist. I can say that he's a good friend. I actually he's just great. saw him at the stand the other day. I didn't know he was in town. Yeah, he's yeah, he's been in New York for a bit now, but he I love Adam, one of the nicest guys. Um, but yeah, so I Adam was everything was like you just had to read a bunch of books and then write jokes about them. Uh, and I really wanted a job. So yeah. I think that's why I did it. Um, I, uh, but the packet I remember was controversially difficult. I think they changed packet rules in the WGA because the wow. packet yeah, was no, so stupid. It was, I remember looking at this and I, I can't remember the, the girl's name. She's a super funny comic. She kind of had bangs. She kind of looked like a, a 1950s movie star. That was like her look. Okay. Can't remember her name. I think she was from Philly, wore thick glasses. She told me, I think she either got the gig or told me she got moved on to the next phase. And I was like, why'd you do this past <laughs> um, She's like, I lost three weeks of my life. And I was like, yes. Oh, was, Allison Ziedman? Is that yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's great. super funny. She got the gig, yeah. yeah. She took over, I think, as head writer when I took off from there. Really? Yeah. Deserved it. She's she was great. super funny yeah. comic. The most complicated funny. packet that I had that I submitted to last week tonight. And that yeah. was like... It was a little complicated and yeah. required a little bit of research, Dude, but it wasn't I, that. It wasn't I submitted easy. to Jesus and Mary, and I was like, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> they, the, their packet was like, just present vibes. I, I don't know enough about sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've never yeah. said that. <laughs> I've never once said that in my life. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's uh, let's talk about these MLS uh, playoffs that happened uh, this uh, this weekend. The uh, let, Let's... Start in order, and we'll we'll finish with LAFC because as we know that the expertise is there. But uh, Orlando City against uh, uh, Columbus Crew, uh, C- Crew win two nil uh, away in Orlando. And I think this was like Orlando had won fifteen straight at home. Yeah, they this they, it's crazy. It's been a, a a fairly impressive season for Orlando City. What they were uh, second in the table, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, quietly second. Yeah, no, was, I didn't know they were there. <laughs> or, I'm like looking at the bottom of the table. I'm like, Where are they <laughs> Orlando, for whatever reason, um, very just. I don't know, kind of ignored this season. I think the reason is that it's Orlando. You <laughs> like, this, you know, I will never respect a team from Orlando that doesn't have Penny Hardaway on. All right, good. Like, <laughs> I don't care. that uh, Orlando Magic are second right now in the NBA. They're not going to make the playoffs. Ain't talking about I it. didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. Why ain't anybody talking about it? Cole uh, Anthony? You want me to yeah. get a Cole Anthony? <laughs> you want to get behind this? <laughs> <laughs> but this was a, uh, I, I, I think to, because this was the first game of the second round of the playoffs and there were no goals in uh, in the 90 minutes. So all the goals came uh, uh, um, in extra time. And this was, uh, at first it felt a little bit like the, th- this playoff, uh, se- this season for the playoffs is everything is like, is this format 
the right format, right? Every game, we're sort of deciding if this is the, the format we want to keep throughout the entire playoffs. And this game was the introduction of the second round. And because there Which were... Which no, goes back to single game elimination. Yes. And because it was there, there were no goals in the in the first 90 minutes, people were like, oh, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe there should be more games so that, so that teams take a little bit more risk. But, uh, I mean... Very quickly, everything went... Whew. <laughs> 180. So I mean, really, the the change in this game was the the, the uh, red card, the red card from now, Rodrigo Schlegel. Okay, now click on Schlegel's uh, picture real quick. Okay, where is uh there okay the center right back? There. Yeah. Okay, now look at this guy. Okay, first of all, oh wait, hold on, I didn't. <laughs> I did the, uh, oh, you it? didn't do this. We started. So uh, all right, well that's fine. You won't see it just yet. <laughs> but this man, there you go, has a very punchable face. It's very hard <laughs> to see. <laughs> now, yep. why? I bring him up is because if you remember back to probably the single most viral moment MLS has had mm -hmm. until Messi got here, NYCFC and Orlando are in the playoffs. Orlando are out of subs. Their keeper gets gets a red card in the it, for right. the penalties. Yeah. This guy, the center back, <laughs> takes over and saves the winning penalty from uh, Thorarinson. Thorarinson, yeah. Okay. This guy, look at him. He's a center back. <laughs> Nobody knows who this guy is. He's got a wild chiseled jaw. I hated this man forever. <laughs> he gets a red card. Everyone is, oh, and, and I'm sitting there going quietly. I go, good. <laughs> <laughs> this was the clap back. It took finally, years. Finally. And finally we got him back. This guy stood in goal. He looked as awkward as ever. He saves yeah. a penalty by diving for it the way you would jump for a baby. It was just very awkward. <laughs> he, he did the, like, um, he didn't dive. He just moved in the direction where he thought the ball would be. So he'd just be like, I mean, I'm going to stay here. And it ended up there. Yeah. As soon as like the kicker was looking down and not looking at the at the goalkeeper, he was like, oh, I'm going to stay here. He was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to go over here. And he, just, and he stopped a, a, a promising shot. I feel like so much of MLS media is trying to convince the world that MLS is like good and cool and important. But we need to focus on the bullshit like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, These that are... only happens in Major League Soccer <laughs> where a it. weird man saves yeah. the winning goal. Uh, Some random Argentinian <laughs> will step in goal and yeah. somehow wins. So yeah. uh, look, but they they held on and got, got to extra time. But once uh, you're down a player and extra time, these players are absolutely uh, uh, you know exhausted. Give Orlando some credit though; they almost look better. Okay, down a man. They were they were, they were yeah they were creating chances. They were creating chances. They were getting opportunities. As much as I love Columbus Crew, if if you're not a huge Columbus Crew fan. Uh, Wolf or Nancy, their coach, uh, will send everyone, for, pretty much everyone, just bomb forward. Uh, creates a lot of opportunities because he surrounds the box, but they give up a lot of chances. And Orlando figured out, like, all right, I think we can absorb some of that and yeah. hit you on the counter. And they were finding those opportunities. But, dude, I mean, their keeper, Schulte, absolutely incredible yeah. game. Yeah. The, uh, also, low-key, Columbus is a well, low-key stack squad. We don't really not that low key. <laughs> I mean, it's just but we just, just don't know the players' names. No, no, but they got like when Diego Rossi came in, right? I mean, my my best friend <laughs> and, and Christian uh, Ramirez, Ramirez. Uh, old LAFC yeah. player, scored the winning goal. A lot of good. They're actually and in, uh, in the Houston game, uh, Escobar is a former LAFC player as well. That's right. So we scored the winning goals. In three of the four uh, <laughs> games credit. this weekend. That was so one you, of the biggest we <laughs> ever said on the show. Yeah. We all, we win MLS <laughs> Cup regardless of who we go, bro. <laughs> Give us a ring, bro. Um, I, one of the things that I would love to talk to Diego Rossi is he went from, click on his name because I clearly this player before. Fener Bache? Where did he come I from? I think, yeah, yeah, he went to Fener, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which plays in Istanbul, one of the great capitals of the world. Mm -hmm. um, so he went. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, LAFC, Fenerbahce, Istanbul, Los Angeles, Istanbul, Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> it's a bit now, I don't want to disrespect <laughs> Columbus, Ohio in any way, shape, or form, but I would just love to find out, how were you convinced? <laughs> he, he came from Benyarol, which is my family's team in Uruguay. Um, but again, Montevideo, great city, beautiful city, very European for people who don't know. And then you get to Istanbul, one of the great cities of the world. Mm -hmm. And then Columbus, Ohio, and you think that's a lot more cheese than <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> I've been to Columbus. I do. Columbus is a is a great city. I don't know how you could eat there and be like, 
I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's a single good restaurant in the city of Columbus. Interesting. I'm, you know what? I'm willing to back that. And that without having really tried to find good food <laughs> yeah. in Columbus. Okay, yeah. All right, look, our, our Columbus fan base is going to be... <laughs> the, the tweets are coming. Uh, so please, I'm rooting for the crew. I want the crew to win. Uh, the, the they, they have, I am too low-key because I like Wolf or Nancy. The, mm -hmm. This is a, a, a good team. I thought, look, I, I was... Uh, admittedly, I was kind of rooting for the Union, and I thought that they would maybe get that revenge uh, against against LAFC this yeah. uh, this time around but the, the but um yeah this is a a is team he cool against that, buddy? wrong buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a team that um so I love being on the Z morning zoo with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Columbus are a uh, probably one of the more consistent teams uh this season just uh, you know they haven't necessarily yeah. wowed you uh, uh game in and game out but they they find ways to just control games, and this felt like uh, one of those. So now you brought up the union, and I just want to say quickly because I know you have a big MLS audience. Um, Jim Curtin is not a good dresser. Oh yes, we, we need to talk stop talking about Jim Curtin <laughs> we gotta having talk about style. It. I wholeheartedly disagree. <laughs> yeah, okay. He buys one fucking Prada jacket and wears two hundred dollar dunks, and everyone's like, "Wow, he's a cool guy. He's a forty year old man who goes on StockX." Fuck Jim Curtin. <laughs> no. Fuck people who think he's a good dresser. That's not what style is. You buy one jacket and you think you're cool. Maybe you're a Colo or a Philadelphia eight. You're a Los Angeles three. Jim Curtin. <laughs> <laughs> Go the fuck back to Philadelphia where you belong. Now's a great time to tell you Jim Curtin listens to this show. <laughs> Jim Curtin is a, is a fan. Yeah, he's but actually a member of our but Patreon. Before, no. before that, he is a friend. Yeah, yeah. I will say this. We got to work on the jeans. Now, <laughs> outside of that, you know why I give him credit? Because who else is doing the details? Kellen right. Acosta looks great. Oh, okay. Got a coach. Okay, uh, Pep. Looks great. Not an MLS coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bob Bradley's weird type shirts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like uh, for, for coaches? Okay, sure. Right? I mean, for an come American. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For American. Also, we have to like. You keep... thought we were dealing with Bruce Arena? <laughs> <laughs> we got And keep... that's the worst thing he's done. We have, Bruce... <laughs> yeah. we have to keep some level. We of... still don't know what he did. I'm sorry, Jim Curtin. I had no idea you listened. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep some level of context in like, uh, not only. Is it an American coach, uh, you know, from the Philadelphia area? Where's he? I think he's from Philly yeah, originally, yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. or Chicago. I don't remember exactly, but it's just he's also just tall white guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he kind of looks like he's related to Larry Bird. Yeah, like yeah. He's, he he does pretty <laughs> good for. Yeah. We got it. We have what, to, what he's working with. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like Tim Cook's older brother. Just like he beat up Tim Cook yeah, yeah, yeah. growing up, but definitely got a job. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Shout so, out to Apple TV. I love yeah, Apple TV. We're big, <laughs> huge so, fans. We're big Apple fans. Yeah. I think. Look, so I don't agree. That's that's where we stand. I mean, mm -hmm. I I think your criticism is a bit harsh. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, uh, th 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 as also as coaches I, that try. They were told they could only wear Adidas, and he said, "Nah, right. that's cool. I'm gonna get a fine." Here's a, okay. Maybe he's not a bad dresser. I think. He gets too much, too much credit praise. for what yes. he's done. I'm willing to accept it. It's not like he shows up looking like, you know, Brenda Hashtag or something, which is a <laughs> reference a couple people will get. But, like, the guy, tr the guy's trying. Yeah. And that's a step. Okay. I mean, did you see him this week with the cop pop collar yeah. and the... Pico yo, type thing? Bro, he looked like a dock worker got a job in the in finance. <laughs> <laughs> he's killing it. Okay. So let's talk about the game, though. Uh, FC Cincinnati win 1-0 against the Philadelphia Union uh, in the 94th minute. A goal uh, from... Uh, uh, Mosquera, what's his first? Sebastian yeah. Gerson. Yes, Gerson. Mo Mo Mosquera. Great Latin American name. Yes, yes, it's a classic. Where's he from? Uh, he's Colombian. Colombia. Gerson. Yeah. Gerson. Yeah, we Gerson. we love the we love these names. Uh, we <laughs> Dominicans, <big> Cubans. <laughs> well, yeah, we're, we're we, we always when we find like a very creative like we just ain't, like la Latino fi an English yeah. name. You don't need of. to do all that <laughs> when you get one of those. <laughs> Which, by the way, this is why part of Colombia is Caribbean because they do this. Okay, you don't see this in Latin. <laughs> In South America, all right, yeah, that's you need right. us, bro. <laughs> okay, the ones put a little bit of sauce. <laughs> So, but a, a, contra yeah. a controversial uh, goal because uh, every so we had Christina Uncle on the show today. Okay, what? So, the, oh, let me just explain, just in case anybody is not fully aware. But the, the context was, uh, the, it was a, a free kick from uh, uh, Alvaro uh, Barreal. Some would say, a happy foot made some people a sad foot. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, so after uh, the free kick, the ball uh, bounced to uh, what? What was his name? Uh, I think it was a Fert Murphy. 
Um, what's it? Damn, where, where am I not seeing There him? it is. Murphy, oh, Murphy right at the there, top. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Um, what's his first name? Uh, Ian, Ian Murphy. Uh, Bob. Um, Can you make that sound cool? Super American. <laughs> <laughs> Ian. <laughs> so if his name was Yang, it'd be like that's a that's a, a Caribbean. Ball right gets to him. He heads it to uh, to Mosquera, but it looked like it. You know, he it, from the angle that we see. I'll I'll, I'll post it in, in in a second. But it, it looks like the uh, he essentially is like his foot is or shoulder is past uh, Julian Carranza. It's offside. Yeah, it looks as offside. But when you look at when you look at the angle. It looks offside, and it, VAR did not intervene. Nothing no, was called. VAR looked at it, Re, but not, so this did not tell the ref to look at it. Didn't recommend it for a review. They said that it does not pass the threshold for obvious and clear error on the call that it wasn't offside. Right now, I first I said, "Yo, where are the lines?" Because if you watch Premier League, they constantly draw the line. Yeah. Sometimes it's like off the shoulder, and you're like, "You're offside by a hair," and fans get crazy. Now I found this at MLS. MLS doesn't have the ability to do the line. They don't not, not the ability. They no. do not do the line. No, no, they don't have the ability to do the line. It's, but they it's spend not. all their money on Messi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need Messi to draw the line. <laughs> Messi's <laughs> only having an iPad. Messi's Can we bodyguard? Yeah. Like, Yo, is this straight? Is this? <laughs> no, no. They don't they have use the technology <laughs> to do the line. Uh, yes, they don't have the technology in place to do the no, line. No, they cannot. Do you know why? Why? There enough MLS stadiums don't have enough cameras to do it, the lines. So they don't have access to the technology. <laughs> interesting. Which really means it, Club de Foot Montreal ain't got it. <laughs> 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 I think that's pretty much what we know. If real. one person can't afford yeah, it, then nobody, then gets, nobody it. gets it, bro. <laughs> We're turning this car around. <laughs> so they can't do the lines. So what VAR does is they use what. What Christina Uncle called the high 18, which is uh, Travis in high school. No, uh, <laughs> it's a camera angle. <laughs> it's a camera angle from the 18 yard box that's high, mm -hmm. which that's what they use. So Charlie had said there's some angles that, that broadcast doesn't have access to. Turns out that's not true. She, she acknowledged. Broadcast has access to all of them. They just choose not to show you some of them sometimes, mm. which is another Makes question. Makes you think. Right? Makes mm. you think. What are you hiding? <laughs> what are you hiding from right? us? Show us Apple the TV. iPad, Messi. <laughs> it starts at the top of the 18. <laughs> <laughs> Don Garber. <laughs> 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 yeah. Jim. Jim. Tell Don Garber to call us. Uh, so they did an eye test to, a, to assess whether he was so offside or potentially clearly offside to tell the to tell the ref on the on the pitch to come look at it and it wasn't enough so from their angles they don't use the lines from their angles yeah. there wasn't enough to suggest that he was offside which to me i don't know that that alleviates the stress that's caused by the lines it it doesn't but because now it's like you're just. Uh, but if we had the lines, and he was whether he was on or offside, we would still be. We would people would still make the complaint like, "Oh, the game's ruined." We're, we're arguing about centimeters. So I kind of like. I don't love the lines. I kind of like like if it passes the eye test to and to me this doesn't pass the eye test. This looks offside, so I would probably call it offside. But they, if but they're not from sure this angle. from this angle, and I know, look, I, we, I've been having conversations and in, in, in group chats and, and and debating about this. This, if if you're not sure to recommend a review to the ref, then you don't call it, and I can live with that. I would say, there's, you would assume that there is no bias. The only course, way, yes, you should. That that'd be the <laughs> we would right thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> that VAR shows no bias. The only way to know that for sure. There's a couple of lines. <laughs> now, I understand that this upsets people. But if you have the lines. A couple of lines, Alexis in college. <laughs> yeah. I'm too fat for that. I'm too fat for that. Great bit. Though. Uh, I will say, maybe VAR draws the lines enough to call the ref over but doesn't show it to anybody doesn't show it to us doesn't show it to the ref what <laughs> so, yeah is that the transparency you want what because now there's no question as to whether the sideline judge uh, sorry the the official should come take a look at it or not if there's lines and they say hey you need to come look at this 
he still has to use a clear eye test or see other angles to make that final judgment. But if they never show us the lines, then we'll never know and we can't hear, sit here and complain about the lines. Your suggestion, and what I think most people would agree with, is, well, if there's no lines, then we get like at least a real calculation as to how this works or at least a, 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 an actual judgment. It's, a, it's subjective yeah. still, yeah. But then there, there's a chance that bias might sneak in. Yeah, I, I just feel like the, the words clear and obvious do so much lifting all the time with this shit. It's like the ref made a choice and, I, you know, I think he was off sides. Is it clear and obvious? I don't like those. That's such a subjective phrase that it's like in from some angles, it looks pretty obvious. But like, is it clear and obvious enough to turn it over? Yeah. I don't know. It's just such a bummer that. Three games this weekend all had controversial ref calls. Yeah. And maybe that is something MLS needs to look at, that the fact that, like, it's this podunk of uh, refing uh, in my favorite league. But yeah. this is – but in, and my counter to that is all the leagues with, with all the space-age technology mm -hmm. still have the same podunk referees. MLS refs are better than Premier League refs. <laughs> like, Premier League refs are a nightmare bro. as well. Let's I, trade for one season and see how you <laughs> guys feel. Anthony Taylor, yeah. Anthony Taylor in, like, Seattle would actually not escape the story. <laughs> yeah. Like. I actually – so Christina Uncle brought something up, and I'm, I'm interested in what we think. She said that there's not enough refs. In, in like the pool. Yeah. 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 There's just not enough high quality refs to pull from. So to some degree, you have to use the ones we have. Yeah. It doesn't so seem like thing. a good job to get. No. It seems like an awful job to. <laughs> I learned this about talking about soccer on television. You're just lining up for everyone. To hate <laughs> but at, and even even at the grassroots level, at even in youth soccer, refs deal with so much abuse from from Bro, players. I was from I was a youth soccer referee when I was in high school. You these, do not have the temperament. Dude, <laughs> these parents, like over nine year old girls soccer, would get so mad at me. It was unreal. Yeah. People so are crazy. here's my here's my theory or here's my suggestion. Suggestion, okay, we got a business idea. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, if you have a nation of millions of people, but you suck at soccer, what's one of the things you could do that you could create to develop better soccer players? A what? I, 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 an academy. An academy. Okay, so yeah. Why don't we start a refs academy? <laughs> <laughs> right? We go and get judgy little kids, okay? <laughs> Anyone who goes, excuse me, teacher, they didn't do their homework. Get those kids to go, you'd make a great ref. Okay. <laughs> and we develop them from young. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's find the weirdest kids we can find, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. put them together in a building, <laughs> yeah. and make them have a life that they'll hate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, look, they're on their way there anyway. Hey. No one likes, like, excuse me, teacher, you forgot to give us homework. That kid. Yeah, better there than, like, finance. <laughs> yeah. You know? Right. Ugh. Government, it's like yeah. making all of our lives. What if we force way, all players to be refs for a year? Like in order to get into that the league, that would be an you interesting. Be uh, you can't play pro unless you've been a like, referee. Like yeah. to develop some empathy yeah. for uh, for referees. Wait, wait, why are we developing empathy for the ref? The refs need to be better at their job. <laughs> But we should make people be nicer <laughs> to them when they're bad at their job. <laughs> but someone, look, if you're at this level, and we've met enough referees now, like I literally was on uh, the same flight with the referee from the Inter Miami Charlotte game. Uh, the, 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 we don't pay these refs enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm go I saw him in Comfort Plus. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was in Comfort Plus, yeah. though. Was he? Nah. <laughs> I guess it's better if you see a ref in first class, you think it's someone's getting yeah. checked. <laughs> someone's dead. But but you know, I'm, I'm like, like talking. I I said hello to him, and I was like, "Hey man, good uh, good job refing today." He's like, "Oh man, nobody usually recognizes me, <laughs> <All> right?" <laughs> he does that. <laughs> You're gonna swing at him. But there is a um a, after speaking to so many refs, it is. It is a hard job. And yes, it it's is hard. Not. It's, it's hard. a loveless job. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's hard to do the job well. And if you get to, I, I think a, there, there's another uh, ref like on TikTok that goes viral, like a, this tall black dude. I think he um, is a ref in, in like a Canadian league or something like that. But he 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 goes mic'd up. So he mics himself up. Uh, and I, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but I'll get it for next episode. Uh, and he, he mics himself up and you hear I think the, if you Google black Canadian, you <laughs> might find it. I don't know that it's going to be a very long, but he could be wrong. I just thought, but hey, you're going to get a lot of results. That might be like one, two pages. I have your safe search on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So, uh, but, but you hear the interactions with players and, and he has to, um, 
speak like forcefully. He has to speak calmingly. He has to tell them like, no, this is this was the call. I saw what you did. No, you dove there. You you hear every single aspect of it that we don't get to hear live while we're like watching a game. And there's a lot of uh, of you know man management that refs have to do that not all of them are capable of and some are better at it than others. So that's why I have like some sympathy. But but for these calls, when it comes to an offside call, I prefer no lines. And does it look off? Then fine. And if it doesn't, then it, or if it is or is, like, what does it look like? And then I'd rather move on rather than d- we see how long it takes with the damn lines. It's not it doesn't make the, 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 the product more enjoyable to me. I also think there's a theater of working the refs that the players do. And we as fans love our team so much that we don't see when they're acting or they're lying. We ignore that stuff. And so when the players have to work the refs in that way, which is part of the game, and they're trying to get the refs to do what they want, we as fans take it at face value and we are upset with them. Right. But I don't, you know, it's part of the game. Everyone knows their fucking line of the ref. Exactly. I mean, LAFC was doing it quite a bit last night. (laughs) (laughs) I've got a new business idea. (laughs) (laughs) Can't wait. Short (laughs) tail. How about we create the technology? For AI refs. Now there's no more <laughs> there's no more work in the ref. There's no suggestion. It's lines everywhere. <laughs> We've got lasers. I don't know exactly how this works. Just yet. And check this out. <laughs> AI lasers. They're hot. <laughs> They're really hot. <laughs> Super hot. <laughs> <laughs> and they answer any question you ask them. Hey ref, what was the weather in Cancun last week? They'll tell you right away. Damn, bro, I didn't know y'all hired ref GPT out here. <laughs> I'm saying, I don't. Now there's no question. You'll know when something's off immediately. Yeah, and Chat GPT is never wrong. No, no they're never. Never, never. And then every once in a while, you just gotta shut it down and start up again. <laughs> okay, all right, let's move on. I feel like you guys aren't paying attention to my ideas. Another look. The Union had a chance to win this game. They had a couple of really good chances and they didn't put them away, and so it is what it is. So uh, I'm sorry for all the, the dupe fans out there. But uh, Houston against Sporting Kansas City, another very, very controversial uh, uh, non-call. That, this one's clearer, I think, to me. This, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so Christina Uncle said this one, in her recommendation, would have been send the official to the to the screen to see this. Yeah. Because it's a non-call. But there, I will say the keeper jumps into the shot. Okay. So, right, so at every angle, you really can't. Get clear. Uh, well, so we're right, as I we're say right, that, I'm watching an angle. Yeah, we're, <laughs> right we're looking at. I'm literally looking at. It. <laughs> we're, we're looking at. Uh, so Daniel Shallowy takes a, a shot. And who's the player? I actually don't even uh, remember who the player was. That I think that they call him Arms McGee. <laughs> <laughs> and he is he is at the near post, and he does stop the ball with his arm. But the the, the and bo- mind you, the ball is going into the yeah, net. Yeah, without a net. doubt, it's on frame. He, are his Arms in a natural position, I would argue probably yes. I mean, they're at his side. He is putting them down as the ball is So struck. here's where this is tricky. Not only is he putting them down, but that same action of putting them down is actually putting it in the way of the shot. Right. So is he going towards the ball? Yes. Yeah. So it just... <sighs> It, it does hit his arm. It hits him like like in the bicep. Some people were saying like, but in, here you can't tell if it ricochets off his stomach first. So maybe this no, angle we can't. Isn't no, but it, the the other angle that we from the from the front is, in my opinion, it's also clear that it does hit his arm. I I would argue uh, if I'm the VAR working this, it is uh, that it, it hit his arms, but they were in a natural position. Where is he supposed to put his arm? His arms are at his side. They're a, they're slightly. Away from his torso, just absolutely. But the letter of the law still counts for using your arm to stop a goal. Th- yes. Well, this is what I would argue: is that if it this was a, a an offensive player, if a player the uh, the team you with mean the ball who, like said racist thing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dante Benzer. <laughs> that was Dante Benzer. <laughs> uh, Struber would be like, I can't think of. <laughs> 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 can't say uh, anything anymore. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Wow, so cancel culture is in the world in the 90s. <laughs> Why is everybody so woke? Um, no, so but if you are a player with the ball, we know the rule, the updated handball rules that are that if you 
if your arm assists you in getting a goal in any way at all, it's taken back. Even if it's an accident, the ball bounces up, hits your hand, it lands at your feet, and uh, and then you and you hit the ball in. That will not count. Even though your arms were in a in, your arms were in a natural position, um, it will it will not count because you, your hand assisted you in getting that goal. I would argue here in arms in a natural position. But stopping the goal, yeah, it was. It, it isn't the Luis Suarez at the World Cup, and it was yeah, volleyball. That, <laughs> kids not playing it's volleyball. It's not that egregious, but it's it, egregious enough, though. I, I, I wouldn't say it's egregious at all, but it is. No, it's pretty egregious because the, the hand is moving you, into the motion the, the, and look, of blocking. You, you the see shot. the you I'm, see the arm fly back. Uh, yeah, and hit. the arm yeah. is, is. But let's look at the arm before the ball hits his arm and his arm is going down towards his body but it is slightly away from his body yeah. so it is making his body bigger his silhouette so, bigger so slightly I if, his, if he had no arm that ball would go <laughs> okay. new business idea <laughs> <laughs> armless <laughs> <laughs> foosball yeah, yeah. <laughs> Foos <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look you're not gonna like this idea <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, look, I mean we're we're kind of parsing every little frame here. But it is it, it, it as KC fans, I think have a reason to be frustrated. This feels like one you you may want to recommend it. just like get the ref to just look at it because I can't I can't understand why the VR but are we at a point where if you tell a ref to go to the screen, it's already telling them but, and yeah. the crowd that they've made a mistake. Yeah. And that there will be Encouraged or influenced to to change their call. We've we look. We've spoken about this uh, about like sort of the. Uh, I had this question about like what's the percentage of how many times a ref looks at the the the, the monitor and doesn't go with the recommended mm -hmm. call, and it's not very often. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, but this feels like a the one where the ref could have been like, no, I don't agree, and 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 moved on with the game, and then but but for the ref in real time, I and mean, we see where the ref is. He has a good angle, but it's. I, I, I think it, that you you got to recommend this one. This game is so close. This Do you is, have the other angles, or is this the only I don't have them, uh, like, say, like, you know, around Dialed nearby up, yeah. or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it is what it is, man. It's, 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 it's frustrating. Uh, but, look, I, this is another game similar to the Union one. The Sporting Kansas City went up on get against Steve Clark, who had the best game of his, like, career. He mm -hmm. made some unbelievable saves. He stopped the Daniel Shallowy karate kick. Incredible. It was really, really impressive, but yeah, it sucks that they if they lost two nil, I think we we will be like, all right, well, yeah, you know, they got beat by the better team. But because they lost by one, and this is a, a, a controversial part of the game, I could see why Sporting Kansas City fans would be way more upset. So, uh, a, a, a bummer. That's really what it is uh, with these games. Uh, better luck next year. So yeah. Sporting Kansas City. <laughs> we, did get, we did get a new Peter Vermees. Fuck off. Yeah, 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 we got a new one. That was good. Yeah, that was which good. Which is kind of cool. Uh, it's always good when you get the updated one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, the new model. The, the new OS kit. <laughs> kit was great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I just feel like if you were looking at that, it's like take away all the rules and like the nuance of it. Like the spirit of the game is you can't use your hands to do stuff and he uses his arm to block a goal. It's yeah. just clear that they would have scored if that arm wasn't there. And it sucks that they, you know, they've had such a good playoffs and they had such a fun run at the end of the season. I was watching Cavincio uh, while this happened and I just felt so bad that like, it was just such a, I don't know, Sporting Kansas City was really fun to root for in these playoffs. And it's yeah, a bummer I don't know where. I, I also just feel bad in general because like <clears throat> you said, it's to the untrained eye, if you told someone you're not allowed to use your hands in the sport, they would say, well, then that's wrong, yeah. right? It's the way it's written stops you from actually letting the ref do their job in a way. Yeah. And it's just, it's really dumb. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, all right, let, let's move on to uh, Seattle against Did LA. Did they play? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> against Los Angeles Football let's Club. Let's fucking go, baby. Out at, uh, out at Lumen Field. Uh, and a week. I, I, I expected this. is not this. easy winning in Seattle, bro. Yeah. Maxime Crapo literally was standing on his Man head. of the match. Uh, even though it was, pro it was probably Buanga uh, because of the goal. But uh, Crapo was spectacular. Uh, uh, made some unbelievable saves. He saved like five shots that should have been goals. I mean, but that Jordan Morris right now went, mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Jordan Morris sounds like a, like a Southern black woman. <laughs> <laughs> He's just wearing his church hat. <laughs> getting ready to go like, Just drinking some <laughs> sun tea. <laughs> You're tr telling the truth. Yeah. He is the blackest person in Seattle. 
Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Uh, we've uh, been there. It's a very wet city. You, have you heard the, this is a, some of our, our uh, audience, some of our fans have made this joke that I, I just sort of love. And Jordan Morris says that we've had him on the show. He's a, a great dude. And we, we tease him a bunch because of like, you know, he, he why he, he signed with Seattle and then he did, he chose to not play in Germany and stuff like that. So we have like a, a, a history that he has seen us talk about. Yeah. <laughs> but when we had him on the show, we got to confront it. But th- one of the funniest sort of things that have come about his like um, lore is that like some of our fans call him a they, they, they say that he looks like a boxed wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like he just looks. Like, someone just, also he's just said like a cube of a man. <laughs> someone <laughs> also said yeah. ass player. One of our fans who absolutely loves him, by the way. So this is coming from a place of love. Yeah. They said I'm deeply in love with Jordan Morris, but I can't defend when or I can't disagree when someone says he looks like a jersey stuffed with raw chicken cutlets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it means, but it's hundred percent true. He's just—I don't know—he's just a broadly he is, shaped yeah. man. That's Square all. human being. Yeah. But no, but the Duca ball and but the the the, the goal or, or the shot that Kripo stopped, like the chip yeah. that early in we the game. We all hundred percent thought that was going in. Mm-hmm. And it was and credit to Kripo and and obviously you know last year in, at the MLS Cup final, the, the dude breaks his leg, misses most of the season. He's playing with like John LAFC Lester. two to like kind of rehab and and recover and. Just the the wherewithal, because you see on that that shot is that he's he's blocking the far post um, where and, and Jordan is on the, on the left side and he's blocking the far post and you see him like wait there really a really really long time and then at the last moment dive to Jordan Morris's direction but still expect the chip and that was just I was just like damn this dude he knew he cut off all angles yeah yeah but it still takes. Like an athletic wonderment for right. that to but stop. It, it was a little bit shot. of like, um, he ain't going to use his left foot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I thought while, while he was pre- preparing. Well, it's like poker. It's like, this dude got to be bluffing, so I got to go all in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if you beat me on the river, you bet you beat me. But I got to take out every other angle, which means I got to go here. Yeah, it, it was spectacular. It. Yeah. It, 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 this is the second playoffs in a row that we owe fucking everything to Maxime Cropo. If he didn't break his leg in MLS Cup, they would have scored and we would have lost right. in that game. And again, he stood on his fucking head and we are moving on to the Western Conference Finals for the third time in six years. Just want to add that. Uh, <laughs> we have 50% of the seasons we've been in the league, we've been in the Western Conference Finals. Just going to call it a dynasty. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a real Buffalo Bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, and that was an especially scary play building up to that because Chiellini, who is 400 years old, yeah. was he, beat in a foot race by Jordan Morris. And which, we, I mean, we all were nervous when we saw him starting for that specific reason. We're like, he can't keep up with Jordan Morris. And so for Max to do what he did uh, was even more impressive. And then Chiellini had a great game after that. Once he learned, he should drop back a little further. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you wait back a little bit? Uh, but when I saw it was like a foot race in there, the announcer goes like, Jordan Morris and Chiellini. I want to be like, bro, Chiellini, stop. <laughs> don't run. Just He's doing like that fast yeah. walking. Yeah. Yeah. This ain't power this walking. Ain't, your legs ain't built for bro. Your hammies right now are crying. <laughs> uh, but hey, look, and like you said, Chiellini did end up having a really, really good game. And it, it and it was also interesting on the broadcast where Taylor Twelman uh, was like glazing him up, you know. He was just like, "Oh, he's he's thirty. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> glazing him up, you know, getting glazed up. You know what it is. You know. What it is. But he was saying he was like, "Oh, he's thirty nine, but he has the mind of a twenty one year old. Oh, <laughs> like, oh okay. the ass of a twenty five year old." Uh, but no, Chiellini was uh, everywhere he needed to be. He stopped a very, very like a lot of uh, promising uh, uh, attacks, and uh, just I, I, even uh, Murillo as well. Holland's head as well. Holland had, had just such a remarkable season. Still, it's just he's still one of my favorite players. We interviewed him when he was at FC Dallas a couple years he ago. Told the story about like you know when he stopped to help a woman with the uh, yeah right. his car yeah and he tire. broke he got, his neck. Yeah, yeah, he got hit by a car. He got hit by a car and broke his neck. Yeah, it's and uh, and now he's just you know. Uh, bodying Jordan Morris off <laughs> yeah. the ball. Um, He's breaking necks now. <laughs> but we have to talk about uh, uh, Denis Buanga because uh, he 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 got the the game's uh, lone goal. The most beautiful man in Major League Soccer. Yeah. Very he, handsome. He, he is actually. Since you bring that up, you're a big LAFC fan. Who's the most punchable I'm face? A, okay. But also, who's the nicest guy? And why <laughs> is both of those answers Ilya Sanchez? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I I think he just knows how to make the smart choice. Uh, and uh, <laughs> oh, that's from the commercial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am, I'm lining up tires. to score the penalty. <laughs> I, okay, something needs to be said about that too. He's in the commercial. He says the goalie knows which way I'm going, but the smart choice is still to go in that direction. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> go in the other yeah, direction. Yeah. That's the smart choice. Continental tires. Yeah. And again, Continental tires. Big fan. If you want to sponsor love. the podcast, love the rubber on those yeah. tires. Yeah. Ooh, that rubber's great. So, but the now's a good time to tell you Continental tires listen to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just everything you bring up listens to our podcast. The company's all like, "Yep, yeah, I got Continental tire on the phone. <laughs> they want to speak to you. Hi, this is Bob Continental. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you say about us?" <laughs> If I die from a mail bomb, it was Jim Kerr. Yeah, Dude, there were product triangles everywhere. Just a shot directly, yeah. man. Uh, I still feel bad. Yeah. He, I the, wish I didn't say it. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, Boaga is very, very he's handsome. Gonna love it, he's, very a, handsome. he's a handsome guy. His, his hair is very always perfectly coiffed. Right. I, I don't know say. if this is true, but you can tell that when you walk into a room that he's in, you can smell the cologne. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> also, a room he was just in. You can <laughs> still smell an the elevator. Hundred uh, percent. An apartment he moved out of <laughs> yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, if you, this is what I don't like about Denny Boanga. If you just draw a stick down the side of D. It becomes penis boy. <laughs> Damn, bro! How childish <laughs> we need to be on this show. I mean, we have, we, have, we should have some some standard. Now no. you're just trying to impress me. With this thing. You're like, oh, Travis is here. Yeah. We know what he likes. Oh, he's a writer. <laughs> oh, well, then let me show I you. I saw that Adam reads every yeah. time. Did you know that a D looks like a P? <laughs> Adam, and if what, Adam, why won't you talk yeah. about this? Uh, I just ruined something, Adam. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> okay. Bro, uh, when he did the the jaywalking one, mm -hmm. I was like, bro, you're gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're gone too far. You broke down jaywalk. Uh, um, but, but the goal, okay, the goal from uh, uh, Buanga, which was a, a great, uh, the, the, uh, look, you got to give credit to the goal. It was a very Denny Buanga moment, though, because he could have passed the three of them. <laughs> 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 that is shot. true. But but the uh, the dummy from uh, Christian Oliveira. Yeah. Uh, re that was the play. That as soon as that happened, I was just like, "Yo, uh, you know." Because one thing that was entertaining about this game, uh, even though Jordan Morris and Chiellini, you know, you knew who they, you know, he was trying to like out, out, outrun him. But I, I, I would love to see. And I pay. I'd pay to see this. I'd pay to see a straight up race between uh, uh, Denis Buanga and Nuhu. Just a straight up one on one race Ooh, to yeah. see who is faster. Can I tell you how that ends? How does that end? New who red card. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> I can't two foot somebody in a race. Because <laughs> they there were a couple times where uh, Buanga and I'm sure he's done he's done this against uh, other teams, but he was just like, yo, I'm just gonna hit. I'm not gonna do any fancy moves. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna hit the ball past you yeah. and run at, over there and get it before I'm you hit can. R two. <laughs> And I'm yeah. a burn pass yeah. all y'all. And and what normally happens from having watched him, either he beats them or they foul him and we get a free kick. Right. It, yeah. It's a really smart move from him. But what you what you said about Oliveira, the uh Vince LaRosa, who is a host on Happy Foot Yeah, the with homie, me, yeah. Uh, we, and also the name of a manager for a wrestler <laughs> on WWE. <laughs> <laughs> um, Doesn't yeah, that, Vince LaRosa sound like yeah, he's it, next to the tag team champion <laughs> of the world? <laughs> <laughs> um, he, but he used to work at LAFC. He's a very smart guy. He came over to to help us out, and on our post game show on YouTube last night, pointed out that like Christian Oliveira is a 21 year old kid, just came over to the team. A 21 year old forward is going to want to score in the playoffs, and the fact that he had the intelligence to be like, Bawanga's right there. I don't need the moment, right. uh, and I will get open in case he decides to pass, which he never will. Um, <laughs> but that it's it's a big moment for a kid to make that smart of a choice this early on the team uh, at LAFC. I agree, and that brings me to two things I want to say about Christian Oliveira. One, you ain't got it to be a striker then. Uh, <laughs> you, you dummy, so someone else can score a money. You get paid for goals. And two... You're going to go to Fenerbahce, and then you're going to end up on Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> you're in <Okay. you're laughs> <in> Los Angeles. <laughs> We've seen the, the career path. We know how it goes, dude. Uh, no, it was... Uh, Start uh, eating cheese now. Get your body used <laughs> to it. And, and look, and Buanga scored how many goals? 17, 16 goals uh, this season? Click on his name. Uh, I mean, he, he... He's had an absolutely incredible year. Golden, incredible. Uh, and, Golden boot, right? Golden boot. Yeah, and also, uh, he is either the fifth or sixth right now 
in the world for most goals across competitions. Well, Blanca has 24 sixth? goals. By Fifth the way. or sixth. Okay. Yeah. Um, he didn't you're not British. <laughs> 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 and uh, the fact that he could be on that list and not win MLS MVP is infuriating. There are four or five people who have scored more goals than him on the fucking planet, and yet we think some man in Cincinnati... <laughs> in, there's no one in Cincinnati better than Eddie Belanda. <laughs> they put chili on pasta there. Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. No. Well, look, and yes, we, we did get the, the it news... It is good if you're constipated. <laughs> that is very important. We did get the news that uh, the, the MLS uh, MVP has been awarded to uh, Lucho Acosta uh, of FC Cincinnati. And, and I, and I think... The way, Qualifies to play for the United States of America now. Uh, he's, is it official that he became a citizen? I think he has a green card. No, you don't, you need to be a citizen. Yeah. It's no, not I green think card. You could do green card. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, don't I, think I know so. he was in the process. I haven't. I heard think you need to. I think be, you need to have I'll lived here for call. five years. <laughs> I'll make a phone call. And, Biden, baby. And be a citizen. Ilya Sanchez now can do it. Yeah. Yes, he I is. He, he yeah. is a citizen. Yes, I did see that. Um, but look, uh, so I understand the, the you know, I, he had, my, I voted for Lucho Costa for, uh, just, I don't mean to upset you, but, <laughs> um, it, mainly because, I uh, hey, this has been vote. fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to vote. Uh, <laughs> so, I was like, I'll do it later. And then like, it's done by me. Like, You're the happen. reason RFK Jr. is going to be president. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> so. hundred percent will forget to vote that day. So, uh, but I, I, it, I think because of the, the combination of goals and assists is why uh, Lucho Costa got my vote. I mean, he, he's just such... He's also dominant yeah. on the best team in the league in, over the course exactly. of an entire yeah, season. Yeah. So I give, I'll I, just say, if you take Denny Buwanga off LAFC, we would have won three games this season. Like, he was so fucking important to the team. Yeah, we but could if you do take Lucho Costa out of FC Cincinnati, you remember their Cincinnati. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, that's fair. That's fair. And they do put chili on pasta. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We can't Really forget. important. Can't forget that. Really God, important. I want them to lose. I really don't want to have to go to Cincinnati for the finals. Well, yeah. <laughs> get, your, uh, get your flight now. So, so we, we do have the... Um, so we know, obviously, the... Dude, the Hell is Real. Final. Hell is Real. That'll be cool. This is going to be huge. Well, that, that's why I think the, the, the Columbus game happened before the, uh, the Cincy Union game so i think part of it was like vr was like i kind of want to see that mm -hmm. field yeah. let me know <laughs> vr was like bro i already bought flights <laughs> so, okay. i still think it's possible inter miami will be in the mls cup final <laughs> i don't know how they'll figure it they're out. gonna figure it out. it's gonna be a testimonial <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh but the the uh the the conference finals are happening on saturday december 2nd fc cincinnati against columbus crew uh 6 p.m eastern and LAFC against Houston Dynamo. I will say this, outside of the handball, uh, I think Houston is probably the most defensively impressive team left in the yeah. in the uh, playoffs. But I think that that will get sort of minimized when you go to LAFC. Because that that home crowd for LAFC, and then not just because you're here, 3252, it's you know home field advantage is a significant thing in yeah. MLS. And I think that might be just a little too much. For, I, it's for this. This is going to be a tough one. To, like I think Cincinnati should win against Columbus. It should be Cincy LAFC in the final. I, so I don't know. This is Houston are have been surprisingly really really good. And uh, Hector Herrera, H H, he's winning absolutely. Insane. And it's just it's just one of those things where he's yes he's an older player. And he is not the fastest on the pitch, but the, the dude just knows. He knows where to sort of place the ball where other people are not going to be. Uh, he he, but he's also like a sturdy player. Yeah, like yeah, nobody yeah. can really knock him off the ball. He's Mexican Jordan Morris. <laughs> <laughs> he's Jordan. He's Jordan <laughs> Morris. He's, he's a jersey stuffed with Al Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I am so hungry now. <laughs> I, I, a lot of LAFC fans are discounting the Dynamo, and I think they're dumb. I We were all were nervous about the Seattle game because we had not won in Seattle since our first game ever. We had not won at Lumen Field or CenturyLink or whatever mm -hmm. since our very first game in the season so, or of, our, of our team history. And so we all were very nervous about that game and sort of just assumed we could beat Houston. Houston has beaten us twice this year. We have not beaten Houston. Yeah. And uh, Seattle hadn't scored a goal on us. So I think we need to not be as um, – we shouldn't look past Houston. I will say BMO is a place that is tough to play in, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. still hate the fact that it's not called Bank of California. Yeah, it's anymore. weird. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. Houston had 
I mean, I'm sorry, LAFC had some real up and ups and downs this season. So I think right now you're both heavily in form. Yeah. Again, you're going to need Maxime Crapo to, to really step up the same way he did in the last match, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it not, it's not going to be an easy game. Uh, and it, I guess you would have to favor LAFC because they're at home. Because they're home. Home but, field advantage, especially yeah, in MLS yeah. playoffs. But huge. Houston has been... Uh, no one tells you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Houston has been really good. So uh, or yeah. Orlando. I, and and they, they did look pretty sharp against uh, Sporting Kansas City. Yeah, it required a bunch of saves from Steve Clark. Um, Steve Clark also has to step up as well because he's going to, you know, the, the attacking threats on LAFC are a little bit better than Sporting Kansas City. So uh, it will be challenging. All right. I just quickly want to say Steve Clark looks like a bartender who would offer you drugs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to make a little money on the side. A little redundant, though, right? I mean, you know. <laughs> Steve Clark is surprisingly also um, not super tall. And and still makes some pretty remarkable saves. He's not that big a dude. Here's something I learned not that long ago: shorter goalkeepers have a better save percentage than taller goalkeepers. Yeah, didn't this came up with like a Nick Romando thing or something like that? Yeah, because they they can they, stop, they can the stop lower shorter shots. Right. shorter shots. Yeah, what's can we can we guess Steve Clark's height? I mean. Uh, Hold on, if you kick, I can look up. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, come on. Sorry, too late. Oh, but it's in centimeters. Yeah. That doesn't uh, mean anything <laughs> to me. <laughs> I was going to guess 188 <laughs> centimeters. <laughs> and now here we are. <laughs> Let's Google that real quick to figure out what that is in feet. Uh, are you going to tell us? Uh, yeah, I got it. Oh, okay. Do you want it? I have it here. Wait, we, guess uh, Six foot one. Six two. Wow. Okay. okay. It doesn't look six two. I'll be honest. All right, not that short, but for for a goalkeeper, a lot of goalkeepers are like six four, six five. So yeah, it's kind yeah, of yeah. Uh, like uh, the wingspan. His wingspan is not that crazy. Right, right, That's right. the thing. Okay, so uh, you know, obviously got, having a good playoff so far. Also, the disrespect to put his height in centimeters and his market value in euros. <laughs> Some <Man>. less dog. <laughs> Step up, fat mob. Steve, fat Steve, mob. Steve Clark was the the goalkeeper that gave up the the early goal against Columbus in the 2016 MLS Cup final when when yeah. Portland. Uh, when v Valeri uh, scored in like the first like thirty seconds of the game, uh, Steve Clark was the guy that made the error that that, that gave up. He that goal. also was a character with no dialogue in the first season of The Office. <laughs> you can't prove I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you all looked at his face and go, "That's actually possible." Huh. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got we got to wrap up. He's uh, a CAA. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of uh, things we didn't get to. Uh, we obviously, it's all all MLS uh, playoffs, but we we're going to talk. Arsenal being on top. Top of the league. Good for you. Let's go. Uh, we're going to talk about the Everton protest. We didn't get to Oh, can I upset you about Everton real quick? I would love being do we, upset do about Everton. Do we have Everton. like 30 seconds? Yeah, yeah, yeah go for it. Okay, hold on. I got to pull it up. I'm I, sorry I to mean, everyone that I made them talk about MLS. No, no, no. This was great. <laughs> no, no. This is what we wanted. Okay. So Everton lost 3-0. Yes. Garnacho scored that ridiculous goal. Yes, yes. Can you guess uh, Manchester United's XG? Oh, I kind of saw this. Uh, it was definitely under... One. No, no, it was two point twenty two. Oh, okay. Do you want to guess Everton's? Again, they lost three now. They lost three now. That it had to be like five. And there was two point forty seven. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so you have better XG. Yeah, yeah. But you lost three nil. Yeah. If well, you look at the heat map, bro, you guys got nothing in the, in the <laughs> opponent's box, bro. bro. We got a we had a couple shots that should have gone in, <laughs> oh, and they man. did not. Uh, but hey, uh, uh, Jack Harrison looked good. He did look good. Yeah. What are you gonna do? All There's right. Some positive. Um. Uh, what are you gonna do? I mean, just the protest. <laughs> three nil. The, <laughs> the protest was the man you of the match. You should have won that game. <laughs> okay. And that was three nil. Uh, let's wrap up. Uh, Travis, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Make sure you go check out Happy Foot, Sad Foot. Uh, follow uh, Happy Foot, Sad Foot there on on Instagram. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, I love seeing. People in the comedy world really care about uh, about the sport and 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 especially care about MLS and care about American soccer. Uh, I think it's you know we've we've always said it's just a it's a it's two niches that have really never crossed paths and it's like it's long overdue. So I'm uh, happy to see that you're making the contributions to the game. And 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 I've said this to both of you guys: we couldn't have done it without your inspiration. Aww. You both are very very good at what you do, and you do it while knowing so much more than I do about <laughs> soccer. So uh, you guys are great, and and um, it means a lot that you invited me to be here. And if anyone wants to hang out in our YouTube, we love when people heckle us. So after every game, we have a live stream. 
So come and come and make fun of us. And you can call in. Anyone can call in. We've yet to have someone call in and be mean to us to their to our faces. And we want it so bad. <laughs> well, a bunch of people just accepted your challenge. Okay. Uh, you expect a call in by Jim Curtin. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I heard you've been talking about yeah, me, Trav. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How it would rule to fist fight. I know I would lose, <laughs> but it would be such a good story to get my ass kicked by Jim you Curtin. Would you would lose so bad. hard. He <laughs> is a former athlete and he's like in great shape <laughs> he wouldn't get a stitch of blood <laughs> uh all right travis helwig everybody also you uh travis helwig is also your like socials and yeah stuff, yeah right? yeah but uh, all that stuff's sad now yeah, yeah. I don't do <laughs> uh but no uh, we seriously appreciate it we had a great time thank you so much for coming through uh make sure you uh follow him follow us at soccer cooligans on all social channels uh you can follow our instagram and do all of that Jazz, uh, please do subscribe uh, on YouTube uh, as well. TikTok, Twitter, X, whatever the hell Draft you want to call Kings it. Draft Network, always love our Draft Kings Network. Shouts to Draft Kings Network. Shouts to Coors Light, of course. I love, love gambling. I love beer. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, they go hand in hand. They go great together. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me better at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, we'll be back. Uh, actually, so just a quick update. We'll be um, back next week. Where we're. we're Sort of taking off this Thursday because we have uh, a, 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 a project that we have to go be a part of. Uh, so we we will have a special episode. We're styling Jim Curtin. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time you know. <laughs> we have a um, uh, so on Thursday we're going to be uh, have a special episode, the, the, the trivia episode with, uh, with right. Dax McCarty. This is huge. Dan Gargan, um, uh, Major League Journeyman, yeah. Major League Journeyman, those guys. Um, so we're gonna have the the trivia episode that'll be uh, on the podcast. Uh, and a lot of people uh, on the audio side uh, may have not heard it, but it's seriously one of the one of the like favorite things that we've ever done. Really, really fun. Uh, just have a trivia challenge with a bunch of MLS players. Yeah, shouts to Mike and shouts to their producer who put together like yeah. a whole game show for dude. It was, yeah, five it was really good. It's party. really good. It's, it's, so dope. So, so it's already up on YouTube too. So check it out. Yeah, if you want to see the video so podcast will be up on Thursday, and also check out the rest of our socials throughout the week. We'll still be posting like we always do. We've got a ton of content for you guys. So right, we'll be uh, here. so uh, so we'll be back next week on uh, Monday. You know, live again in studio. So uh, all right, we will see you then, everybody. Uh, take care. Hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. Easy cooligans, buddy. Be well. Peace, everybody. Love you guys.